Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dreams Unlimited Travel Podcast. My name is John Magi, and I'll be your host. And this week, Tracy Heinrichs walks us through booking a Disney Cruise Line vacation. Uh, at the panel this week, I have our cruise line experts, agent consultant Tracy Heinrichs. Hi, everyone. Client services manager for Dreams Unlimited Travel, Kevin Close. Hi, everybody. Back in the production facility, we have our crack production crew. Oh, wait, that's only one person. Producer, Craig Williams. Hi. He's on crack. No, he's not on crack. He's our crack no, producer. I'm on crack. He's on crack. Um, as I mentioned, Tracy's going to talk us through booking a Disney Cruise Line vacation. Um, you know, one of the things that Disney seems to excel at is that they seem to have a way of making things as complicated as possible. <laughs> Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we I talked, like to call that job security. <laughs> you like to call job security. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, we talked about um, Royal Caribbean, and even with many more ships and many more itineraries, Disney Cruise Line still seems to be something that people stumble when they try to book it. Um, with the different ships, itineraries, uh, levels, perks, and options, uh, it can be pretty confusing to get the right Disney Cruise Line vacation booked. Now, with the announcement of two new ships being built to be released in the next few years this will probably only get worse so tracy's going to help us talk us through it the things you should look for and sort of help explain booking a disney cruise line vacation so take it away tracy so i think we'll start by saying we've talked about disney cruise line and royal caribbean and the difference between the two i'm going to kind of pick this conversation up in that the decision to go with disney cruise line has already been made okay you know, it's so a good as a, spot, right? Right. So as opposed, you know, because we can talk, we can do three more shows right. on the differences and why one or the other. But I think it's a good place to start to just say the decision's been made. It's Disney Cruise Line. Now what? Perfect. Okay. So the first thing to decide really is ship, sail date, itinerary. Those things sometimes are naturally chosen for you. Perhaps you only have a week that you can travel. Perhaps your, um, you know, your vacation date is only a certain time. You don't have a lot of flexibility. So sometimes those things are chosen. The great thing about Disney is that we have uh, four ships, the Dream and Fantasy, the Magic and the Wonder. And I would say while there's differences between them all, size and, and different amenities, I think they're all the same quality. I would agree with that for sure. You yeah. know, whereas sometimes you get in other cruise lines with a lot more ships in their fleet, there can be big differences. I think with Disney, I think we're pretty well talking about the same quality of ship. Even when you talk about ships that need rehab, that need to have, uh, you know, work done to them, um, there's not this this idea that you're getting on this tremendously old ship that's falling apart. Right. Disney up keeps the their ships up constantly. So even the ships that are going in for rehab, there's still a very small difference between And having that. been on all four multiple times, I would say each has its own personality, its own charm. So, you know, I'll have sometimes have a guest or a client ask me, you know, well, it's only it's the wonder doing that itinerary or should I be no, you shouldn't be. And I think that going to different ships, sometimes it's just because you've been to one. So, you know, people want to try them all. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes that's the reason that you're choosing one cruise over another. But I don't want anybody to feel like if this is the date you can travel or this is the ship that fits into your budget, that you're going to have any lesser of an experience as far as the quality of the ship and the experience goes itself. Because right, you're going to be locked into certain ships for certain itineraries right. based on ports and things like yep. that. So I agree with that. The level of... Um, uh, theming, the level of up upkeep, the level of The quality of, of the service, service, the size of the state right. rooms. Pretty much across these are, the board. Yeah, these are standard things. And I do think, though, people um, develop favorites. They absolutely oh, sure. a different yeah. show, yeah. I mentioned that yeah. the Freedom of the Seas is one of my favorite ships. And I think it's because I have found that things there that I really like. Right. So I think there are people who yeah. are fans of the dream or yeah. fans of the magic. Yeah. And I think for kind of the way I'm going to be talking about today, it's going to be a lot of, I really think this is more geared to all cruisers, but really, you know, the first time cruiser or the first time to Disney cruise, mm -hmm. you know, so maybe it's the people who haven't had time yet to develop their favorite. So if you haven't been on any, I don't want you to feel like you're sacrificing by choosing one of the classic ships. You had mentioned um, a refurbishment. 
the magic was done, I think we're about two years ago now that the magic was done. Um, the Wonder is scheduled to go mm, this year. Next, yeah. yeah, September to November, I believe. So, but I, I'm always amazed when people say, "Well, I'm not going to go on the Wonder this year because until it's been right through a refurb." And you think to yourself, "It really doesn't make that big a difference." Yeah, but with you know Disney what's funny? Ships. Some of the diehards, I have clients who want to go on the Wonder before it's been mm. refurbed. So there's uh, th- when I talk about fa- uh, a favorite ship, it might be because I found a certain spot where I like to sit and read. Yeah, it, right. It's not that one ship has a higher quality than the other. Yeah. It's that you know they all I, have personalities, right? There's yeah. a coffee shop on one that I find there's a comfortable corner booth that I enjoy, kind of thing. Right. And so uh, one uh, thing that's come up with a wonder is what exactly they're doing to it, because if they apparently with the magic they change the back end of it, mm-hmm. and if they do that with the wonder, there might be some issues bringing it through the Panama Canal. And the Wonders, the ship right now that they're using in Alaska for um, the summer cruises in Alaska. Mm-hmm. So it's also uh, important to note at the time that we're recording this show, we don't know what the rest of 2017 looks like. That is correct. So we have the first part. We have not had a release yet. In so terms of uh, sale dates sale and Sale dates. We don't know what right. anything past kind of early May of 2017 right. looks like. Um, So choosing that ship, the sale date itinerary, like I said, a lot of that's already going to be dictated by your schedule. If you're flexible, then then we can start looking more specifically. So now maybe there's certain ports you want to see or there's a certain, um, you know, a port where it's easier for you to depart from. Um, or there is a certain ship that you want to try, or maybe it's the length of your cruise. For example, the Dream is doing three and four night Bahamas at a Port Canaveral. So if you want a seven night cruise, the Dream probably isn't going to be your ship. Now, obviously, there's a back to back option, but we won't, you know, we won't get too involved with that. Um, so sometimes it's that, or sometimes you want to sail out of Miami, and you know you're you're bound by whatever ship is doing Miami for that time. So this is all part of the discussion that you can have with your agent if that's the, way, the route you're going. Um, but we can also help you choose based on price. So for some people, I mean, let's just put it out there. We'll start right with it. A Disney cruise is an expensive cruise. It certainly is. Uh, generally, Absolutely. when you're comparing it to other cruise lines, it will usually price higher. We've talked before about why and different reasons. So, you know, you always want to look at ways to save money on that cruise. But also... I, it's not just higher because it's just Disney. No, it's, it's, it not. wins a reward. It wins the award every year for yep. one of the top five yep. cruise lines. So absolutely, there are definitely reasons. And you get what you pay for. And um, for many people, there's more value in a Disney cruise as well. So, but a Disney cruise usually will just comparing dollar to for dollar price higher. So you want to look at when you have flexibility. What if I, you know, if you can avoid summer, you know. Disney Cruise Line is a family cruise line. So if you can avoid the times of the year when families are cruising, you're going to find supply and demand. So summer rates are probably going to be at the highest. But if you can cruise that seven-night itinerary in January or November, um, you know, early November, late October, you may find that you can save a considerable amount of money. Another way to save is if you can book last minute. Um, Sometimes that will backfire. So with cruising... It's kind of, you know, the earlier you book, the better your rates. If you haven't done that and now, you know, you're a month or two out and you're thinking now maybe I do want to look at a, at a cruise for May, we can look at what's called guaranteed rates. So Disney has released something called IGT, OGT, and VGT. These are interior ocean view. Or I'm sorry, interior ocean view. There's a contradiction. <laughs> These are interior guarantee I want one of them. (laughs) Yeah, no kidding. (laughs) Um, Ocean View Guarantee and Veranda Guarantee. So these will be at a reduced price. Now, sometimes that reduced price is very similar to what the people got when they booked really, really early. So I don't want people to necessarily wait for those thinking they'll get a better deal. But sometimes, you know, when you're looking at, like if I was looking at a price now and three weeks from now, an IGD came out, I could probably see a big difference. I also want to point out, too, that these are not something that comes out of for every sailing. Exactly. Because there are people who say, well, I've been waiting for an IGT for this sailing to come out and it didn't happen. I'm mad at Disney. Well, you know, you took the chance. Right. Well, that's because Disney filled the ship. Exactly. Yes. And so what these are, and really, let's be honest, these are used to fill space that hasn't yet been filled. Explain and what a guarantee be, is. A guarantee, um, there's two different ways that term is used. So the first one in the IGT, OGT, and VGT is that you're booking an interior stateroom, but the location, the category of that interior stateroom is up to Disney. 
So they're saying, we're going to give you a lower price. We're going to let you come in at this price point, but you're going to give us the control to put you where we have space to fill. We don't know what stateroom you're going to get. We don't know where you're going to be on the ship. That's right. And the second time you may see a guarantee mentioned is you're booking a specific category. Like maybe I'm booking a category 5B, but it's in guarantee status. So what that means is Disney saying, okay, we're going to still let you book at the 5B price, but again, you're giving us control. So in that situation, I'm guaranteed at least a 5B with the possibility of an upgrade to something higher. But that 5B can be anywhere in the category. Okay. And, and wh- anything above, you're guaranteed a minimum then that's of right. a 5 So your stateroom then could be any place that that's there's right. a spot to right. plug you exactly. in as long as it's a 5B or higher. That's right. And sometimes what Disney considers to be an upgrade, you may not. You know, so so there are some risks with guarantees, whether it's an IGT, OGT, VGT, or whether it's booking a stateroom in a category with guarantee status. Right. One of the things that Disney, again, I talked about how they have this great knack of making things complicated, in that instead of just having categories, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, now within a category, there are different levels. Yes. So you can have two levels that skip a category. You can have a 5B and a 6C. No. What is it? <laughs> Not exactly sure where you're going. Oh, so you when can you have see a, four, a few more words, I'll help you. <laughs> four. You can have a 5A. Say more about this. Can't you have ones with the, where they're, they're just flipped between the two categories? And it's just a matter of location, is I guess um, what I was saying. Well, what happens is when, when it's a difference of location, typically the number's the same. So a 5A, B, C, and D, for example, on the new ships. Gotcha. And there's also a 5E. Um, what that means is basically with cruising... The higher you get, the higher deck, the closer to the middle of the ship, those are the higher pricing. So the 5A would be deck 9 and 10. This would be um, at the highest price point, price point in the category 5. And then 5B would bring you down to deck 8. 5C bring you down to deck 7. Right. Or and you could also move towards the end. That's right. So now you, get into, now you get into a category 6. So a category 6 will be at, at, you know, towards the aft of the ship. I guess that's where I was going. Yes, exactly. 5E and a 6A could be the same st- uh, uh, height in the ship, the same floor, right? But could they be in different locations. Yes, okay, I guess that's same. what I was trying to yeah. get to. Yeah. So, so that even if people say, well, I always want to be on deck six. Right. You, we could have three different options to right. put you in a veranda stateroom on deck six. So it's a matter of, of knowing what to do within that. And it, it also can change between the ships. So now, say, for example, the category six is on the classic ships. They have a solid white wall veranda. Classic ships are the magic, magic and the wonder. And the wonder. Okay. So what happens is uh, when you're sitting in front of you, instead of clear plexiglass. On the balcony. On the balcony, it is a solid white wall. Now the category six is on the newer ships, the dream and the fantasy. That wall only comes up, you know, not very far at all. It's really not that obtrusive. Mm-hmm. So there's differences. A category 4E on the classic ships is a family stateroom, Ocean View. Category 4E on the newer ships may look like the same size, but the stateroom is smaller, the veranda's bigger. So there's a lot of, it's not like there's a standard across the board. Category 7s is a great example. On the classic ships, these are the navigator verandas. These are enclosed verandas with just an open porthole. But on the newer ships, Category 7 is... A regular veranda just has an obstructed view or might be a little bit smaller. And so, that just means that there could be a lifeboat in obstructing, obstructing right. part of your view. So there's so there's so much variety between these different it's any wonder like clients are confused because there's, right, there's confused. It, right. I mean exactly. and the thing too is it has changed. That's right. One of the things Disney did re- not recently, but a few years ago was completely revamped all of their stateroom categories. Right. So now there's instead of category one, there's royal suites and yep. there's like also that. Even within the categories, I know there are people, there are certain ways that the beds will face. Oh, yeah. So there are people who are, are there yeah. are guests who and are sometimes specific. sometimes in the same category, they may alternate so that, you know, right. so there's a lot of, of varieties. And as we're talking about staterooms, we really should mention on, a, on the Disney ships in general, all four of them, these staterooms are some of the largest at sea. Often, um, I've talked about how I we often cruise in interior staterooms. On other cruise lines, we will usually have to upgrade to a balcony just because we need more interior space. Mm-hmm. Whereas the interiors, the interior categories on the Disney ships 
are actually larger than some balcony cabins on other ships. Let's talk so. a little bit about, so we've thrown out a lot of terms and we've talked a lot yeah. about different stuff. I'm a client and I've come to you, Tracy, and I say to you, I want to book a Disney Cruise Line for the first time. Where do you start with a question with them? The first start is when. When can you travel? If they are flexible, and I really want to find out from somebody what their, what's important to them, what's their priority. Mm-hmm. If priority is price, if priority is these are my sale dates, we really need to narrow it down to when. I think yeah, when is probably when the most is probably important. the most important because right, if they are narrowed in, if, if there's a only certain amount of dates they can go, right. you can work within that. That's if they're right. flexible, then you can move to the next question. That exactly. also limits your destination. That's right. And then when the second question to when is how long. And so how long of a cruise, I hear people say, we're only going to do a three-night, but we don't know if we're going to like it, we're going to try it. If you're choosing a three-night because of budget, that's different than what I'm going to say next. If you're choosing a three-night to try it, I don't know that a three-night cruise gives you a really good example of what cruising is about. I agree. And so I think sometimes people choose a three-night to get a taste of it and find it's a negative taste. And I think that's because in three nights, you know, there's just not enough time. Also mm-hmm. on the shorter itineraries, the ships are not doing, uh, there's not as many planned activities happening. Um, you also, it, I find that a three night, and I've done several of them, so it's a nice getaway. They're a little more hectic. Yes. It's on the ship. It's unpacked. Yeah. You've, you've right. got days full of stuff to do, that, and, and then you've got to get off. Yeah. So my concern so, is always for that first time cruiser that the three night is not going to give them the full you know opinion of what cruising can I be. think you need a four night where you have at least one Minimum, day yeah. at sea where you get to explore the ship and enjoy the stuff that's on it without having anything yeah. planned for you to get a real taste of right. cruising so once you've decided when um usually that will dictate itinerary sometimes not um and the other thing is maybe we're starting with budget and then deciding when and and that can happen as well um then we, we really need to know how many people who is going to be in this stateroom? Great thing about Disney is that all the staterooms sleep at least three. That's not the norm in the industry. Um, and many sleep four with several options to sleep five. So very unique options for families on these ships. Um, so we need to know what everybody pays a price. So sometimes I'll have a client who will say, well, I've seen a price and it's this. They're only pricing two people. Used to hotel rooms. Mm-hmm. You know, true. where a hotel room has a price for the space. This is a cruising is a price per person. Right. So and usually for the third and fourth person in the room, the price drops significantly. It, yeah, it can over drop the first quite person. a bit as well. Yeah. So that's you know, something to right. consider too. So is, it is a reduced cost, but there is a cost per person. Right. So the number of people in the stateroom, the ages of the children, these are all important things in kind of coming to that first decision. So once we've decided, we've chosen your cruise, we've cho- chosen your stateroom, we know where you're going. Uh, can I just add something to that? Is it useful? If, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you can judge me when I tell you. If you're booking, if you're thinking of booking a, a family or a group of people, book everybody you think might be going. Yes, good point. It is much easier to remove a person from a stateroom right. than it is to add a person to a stateroom sometimes. Because what happens is sections of the ships and categories of the staterooms sell out because of lifeboat capacity. So your room might hold four people, but if the, the lifeboat capacity is full, Disney Cruise Line will not allow you to add people to that. That's right. And Can of I course, throw out the, one more thing yep. that's going to now even make it more complicated. <laughs> that's true, except if it's the lead person on a reservation. You can't change the name of a lead person on a reservation. You, yeah, you can. Usually you can. Um, you can change the lead person? Yes, as long as one original person stays. Wow. Yes, as long as one original person on the reservation stays. Yeah, John, where you been? I'm telling you. I know. I'm See? all sorts of stuff today. Right. <laughs> Let me know when I can book that next cruise for you. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so as long as one original person, you can't change everybody in the stateroom, oh, that's but what it is. one okay. original yeah. person has to stay. And the other thing, one little disclaimer is once you're in full payment time, when you we've paid for everybody, the cruise is due in full, uh, taking people out is going to have fees and cancellation. So we're talking about prior to final payment. I should have I yeah. said that. I'm sorry. 
Yeah. So now that you've decided where and when, or what am I going to add? Do I need insurance? We've talked about this before. I think insurance is a really, really important thing to consider, whether it's offered through your credit card company, whether you choose to take the cruise line insurance, you want to look at something like insure my trip. I think insurance should be a consideration in your budget when deciding to travel, especially on a cruise, but I think in traveling anywhere. Talk a little about the price of insurance. Insurance is 8% of the cruise fare. Right. It's not a flat fee, so it is a 8% of that total fare before taxes and all of that. And port uh, charges, I don't right. think. And so what happens with the one thing that will separate Disney insurance from something like Insure My Trip is that it has a cancel for any reason clause. So if you have Disney Cruise Line insurance, you're three weeks out from sailing and you have to cancel. You make your claim with the insurance company. We, for, we cancel the cruise with the cruise line. You make your claim to the insurance company. If that claim is denied, Disney Cruise Line will then give you a future cruise certificate worth 75% of your non-refundable amount towards a future cruise to be used within a year. Easy squeezy. Easy squeezy. I, I think people get confused when they hear cancel for any reason that that just means you're going to call up and Disney's giving you your money back. That's think, right. But I think we've talked about this in the show where we did the questions and answers and we talked about insurance. People have to understand that insurance doesn't mean that your credit card is going to be refunded. No. That's not how insurance works. You put in a claim. You wait for that claim to be settled. You're dealing with an insurance company. Right. Exactly. And insurance companies, let's be honest, they're not in the business of paying, paying out. claims. Exactly. So there's a lot of of conditions and that's one thing I like about the cruise line insurance is that if all else fails you at least are going to get 75% to, to at least rebook another cruise in the next year. I think a lot of what travel insurance also covers is you have to keep in mind it, the, the coverage to me is the most useful when you talk about catastrophic yeah. issues. Yeah. Um, somebody gets sick on vacation. Somebody right. gets hurt on vacation. Yep. That The to, interruption part of the insurance, right. I think, is the most valuable. That's the most important what, yeah. thing. What's happening is it's the peace of mind of knowing I'm a, away somewhere. Something has happened. Now what? And so I think that's the importance of insurance. Another thing to consider, um, just a couple things that aren't included in your cruise for prepaid gratuities. Uh, these are $12 per person per night of cruise. So a family of three, you know, that's $36 per night on top of your cruise fare. These are added on board. You can add them in advance if you choose, or they'll be added on board. And this then gets divided amongst the people on board helping you. So your stateroom host, your, your dining room team, this is divided amongst them. There'll still be ex gratuities on board for the spa and the bar and places like that. But um, this is another expense that you should be aware of going in. These are not. These are no longer optional. So I think the That's word right. gratuities. Right. This is more now a service well, charge. They technically are because you can go you, and you, you can, can go and dispute have them it, but it's kind of like you know not yeah. to go on it to dispute. Then you it. become that guy. Right. Exactly. exactly. That person says. So no. technically, if they you're can going be. to do that, do that on the last night of your cruise and don't That's eat right. again. <laughs> Um, another thing to consider is transfers, transportation, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, so now we've got, we've picked your cruise, we've added your add-ons. Um, I'll just mention quickly a couple different discount options. Generally speaking, there are none. <laughs> I'd like to, you know, really, there just really aren't that many. Let me list them for you. Right. There, there are, are a couple that we'll see, again, like those guarantee categories to sell unsold space. So last minute, we might see Florida resident. We might see a military discount. Sometimes another resident discount. Like I know every once in a while, there'll be a Canadian discount. Um, so we may see those things like Canadian discount, Florida resident discount. We can add those to existing reservations. So if there is availability in your category or you want to change categories, they'll let us do that really last minute, even after final payment. I think that's an important thing to go back and make sure we let people know what that means. You can have these discounts applied if you were, someone was going to book a new cruise and it would exactly match your reservation. Right. Otherwise you may have to change your category. That's right. So, you know, we get that a lot. Well, there's a Florida resident discount. Why doesn't it just apply to my stateroom category or my reservation? Right. Yeah, unfortunately it doesn't always right. work that way. I also think we should talk just for a second about military discounts, military discounts. When they're released, they tend to be very, very limited. 
Yes, they are. And they're also not applicable to existing reservations. Right. So military is one of the only discounts that is new reservations only. So we're not going to be able to apply that to the existing. Now, if something comes out, we can look at what are my penalties to cancel my existing reservation? Would it make sense for me to take a penalty and to rebook? We can certainly do the math for you. But keep in mind that second reservation is brand new. Mm -hmm. So if you had main dining before, you may not. Now you're rechecking in online. You may lose some excursions you booked. You may not. So there's a lot of considerations when it gets to that point. You may not get the same stateroom back. That's right. As silly as that seems, yep. you canceled it. Why can't I just get that same one back? Sometimes There's just a lot of stipulations. So yeah. often with Florida resident discounts, we'll see maybe it's a category 5B or whatever it is. And sometimes it's just because that's the inventory they have. And sometimes they pick one each of Inside Ocean View and Veranda, and then they're guarantees. So I think people don't understand when you cancel a stateroom, they say, we'll just get it back. You have to look at this as when you let that stateroom go, it's put into a big bucket. Right. And not only is everybody at Disney reservations picking from that bucket, everybody online right. is scooping out of and that bucket And sometimes your category is now in guarantee since when you booked. Right, because someone so else just now, got it. So now that stateroom's gone into guarantee into the guarantee bucket. It mm -hmm. didn't even go back into the stateroom bucket. I think it took me a long time to right. understand that. Yeah. So just that's just a little bit about discounts. I really think you need to go into a Disney cruise assuming the price is the price. Right. discounts are few and far between. So now and we've helped with dreams unlimited travel. Someone else watches your reservation yeah. for you. So you don't have to look for a discount. We also, once we've decided all that, we put a hold on the space. As long as it's not a suite, they give us, you know, two or three days to hold it. We can discuss it with you. You can look at your options. We'll send you an official quote, let you know what your deposit is. Deposit is 20% of your cruise fare. And then after the deposit is paid, you're in. So then, now you're in. Now what? Just deposit. If you change your stateroom and go up, your deposit increases. If you add people, your deposit increases. Right. It's based on the so price. it's yeah. so something it's 20, to keep in mind. Yeah. So it's 20% of whatever the cruise fare is. So if the cruise fare increases, the deposit increases. So we can do that. It doesn't increase for things like transfers and insurance. It's 20% of the base cruise fare. So or just excursions, keep that in mind. et cetera. Yeah. Um, so then your deposit's paid. Your deposit is refundable up until your final payment date. I could tell you the final payment dates, but I would need a PhD. Yeah, we need a like, chart and yeah. laser pointers. Yeah, we'd have to do <laughs> And those like little pieces of yarn where you go from one thing to another. Right. Let's just say it's somewhere between 75 and 120 days before you sail, but any time up until whatever your final payment date is, your deposit is refundable with a disclaimer as long as you haven't booked a suite. Right. When you book through Dreams Unlimited Travel, you will get a quote that has all these da important dates that's on right. them. And you'll also have access to a, a client services area that's just your reservation. And you'll be able to see when your final payment is due. Right. So there's no guessing. But We also send you reminder emails that your yes, final exactly. payment is approaching. A couple of days before your, your balance is due, we'll start sending you those emails to make sure that you have a few days to prepare and get your balance yep. in on time so nothing gets lost in the system. So now you're booked. And once you're booked, you're going to have a Disney Cruise Line reservation number. And with that number, you can now go on DisneyCruise.com and you can pull up your cruise. And that's true of booking through us as yep. well. And when you book well. with your, if, so if you book through Dreams, you'll actually have two reservation numbers. One is our internal number that keeps track of the financial details of your cruise. But then you can go on DisneyCruise.com and you can see the fun details of your cruise. Right. And so um, you can then do online check-in, which we'll talk about a little bit later, after your final payment's been made. And again, that date varies a little bit too, depending on your Castaway Club level. Um, but we'll get there. First, before we go there, I want to say, once you've booked your cruise, you've paid your deposit, you've seen it online, you're all set, now it's kind of time to come up with a plan. So depending on how far out you're booking will depend on how involved we can get with your plan. So by plan, I mean, first of all, obviously you have to get to Orlando or wherever you're sailing from. So that's part of your, your flight. And while Disney Cruise Line does offer flight add-ons, we really recommend you don't use their air. Um, you look at your own and your agent can maybe make some suggestions for you. But really, your best bet is booking your airfare direct with the airline. Disney Cruise Line, like other travel companies, uses bundled air. 
Yes. And what's going to happen is it, Disney Cruise Line is going to give you a price of the airfare at the time you book it. It won't be until much closer to your departure date that you're going to find out which carrier you're using. You're going to find out what your travel schedule is. You're going whether to find out what your whether... connection is, if there is one. And sometimes and even your seats. I, We've you, had families. Even more. You, as you get closer, you'll be assigned a seat. And it's often common for a party, a family, to be separated. Yeah. Because what they do is when they take these bundled air, they also take seats that wherever they are. Right. And so, this is not exclusive to Disney Cruise Line. Like no, that's, as what, Kevin I said, was that's saying, what I said. That's why I said travel like, company. I don't want you to think this is something that Disney Cruise Line is doing to you. This is this is an industry norm. So basically you're agreeing to a price to get from A to B, but you're giving them the option to figure out how they're going to get you there. We'll talk about this on another show, but I want you to know that when we talk about ABD, Adventures by Disney, ABD uses published air and you purchase airfare specific right. to you, what you yeah, want. Yeah, ABD it is, is a not different bundled animal. air. That's right. So there, are, there are exceptions. So one of the things I want to just use this opportunity to say is that sometimes people come to us and they say, you know, you're a travel agent. How come you're not booking my air for me? It's not that we're not booking your air. It's that we, we strongly suggest with Disney Cruise Line that you look into your own airfare. Um, you'll probably find a, a schedule that meets your needs much better. You'll probably find a flight that you like better. Uh, if you have a preferred carrier, you'll be on that carrier for frequent flyer miles and things like that. So it's not that we're trying to persuade you from doing it because we don't want to do the work. We actually have your best interest at heart. Right. So. Because, I mean, we can we – can, if you book it through Disney as part of your cruise – that's inflating the price exactly. of your cruise for me. I mean, believe right. me, there's more benefits there's more to benefits me than to, to you it. for and me to book your it. Your airfare is commissionable to us. Right. So, so we, do a, we, we are purposely saying we're going to take less money. We'll have less booking numbers for us because we think it's actually yeah. We re, I truly believe. And, and that's something the airlines did years and years ago. We I watched as I was in the industry. I watched them move away from a using travel agencies and really modeling themselves to be a direct to consumer product. Mm -hmm. And it's just the way that they've created the environment they've created as you well. You have much more control. Exactly. Yeah. Booking your own flights. That's right. We all do our own. Yeah. You know, we'll do Always. our own separate from. And so part travel. of that plan I'm talking about is when do I come in? Do I come in the night before? Um, if you're sailing out of Orlando, am I going to tack on a Disney trip with that? So if we look at in the situation of coming into Orlando, you've got many options. First of all, I always suggest a pre-night if it's at all humanly possible. So funny you should say that. Yeah. Always, always, especially always. If you're some, some, excuse me. Especially if you're coming somewhere where there's a possibility of inclement yeah. weather. Yeah. And so I always, if at all possible... Just because if I'm flying on Friday and my cruise is leaving on Saturday and I'm starting to see delays or weather, my stress level is mm -hmm. a lot different than if my flight is Saturday morning knowing that ship's leaving today. Right. And so that ship's leaving. Disney and Cruise so. Line also wants you to be in at a certain time. Mm -hmm. So they want to make sure that they, you have enough time to get to the port in case there's traffic delays. That's if you're flying in the day of. The day of. That's what I meant. Yes. They want you in by a certain time that's right. of the day of the cruise ship. Yeah. So, so, I mean, for you to fly in the morning of, it's a risk. Now, many, many, many people do it. And I'll yep. hear from lots of people say, I do it all the time. I have no problems. You if have you're to flying from the Northeast in the summertime... Your chance of a snow delay is very slim. Well, not only that, but, there's but there could be mechanical delays. Sure. Your car could break down on the way to the airport. There's yeah. multiple Having a flights. Buffer. Right. Yes. And so just for me, peace of mind, I you're agree. already starting from a relaxed place. So you fly in the night before. And if you are sailing out of Orlando and flying in the day before, you've, you really have a few options here. Mm -hmm. few. So, you know, if I'm flying in, if I have a client saying, okay, I'm going to fly in the day before, my first question is, what time? Because if you're arriving at 10 o'clock in the morning, I'm not going to suggest you sleep at MCO Hyatt. So you, then you're hanging out at the airport all day. But if you're arriving at that 10 o'clock... That is the Orlando the, Hyatt attached yeah. to... That's the, <laughs> Tracy's talking in code. Yeah. Um, but if you're flying in at 10 o'clock in the morning, maybe you want to stay at a Disney resort. Mm -hmm. You can use Magical Express. They'll take you to your resort. You don't have to buy a park ticket if that's not in the budget. Or you can but, spend the afternoon in the park. Yeah. You can, you know, if you don't have a ticket, you can visit Disney Springs, the Boardwalk area, other resorts. You know, there's lots of things that you could do in the area for the day, and then the Disney Cruise Line transfers can pick you up from your resort and take you to the ship. Right. You can also stay, I had said the MC Ohio, what I meant was the Orlando Airport. There's a hotel actually literally in the airport. So if I'm coming in later in the evening, I like to just stay there. I don't have to worry about going anywhere else. Where are you staying this trip? MC Ohio. <laughs> 
I stay there a lot. It's just convenient. And so what they do is they have a deal with the cruise line that in the morning, they're taking your luggage right from your room to the ship if you're using Disney Cruise Line transfers. So there's a convenience factor there Absolutely. as well. You can also stay in another airport hotel that's, you know, which would offer a shuttle. Or maybe that day you want to go down to Port Canaveral already. Maybe you want to get stay somewhere on the beach for the night. So there's lots of options if you're coming in early. If you're flying in and staying at the Orlando Hyatt, there is stuff to do in the airport. There, there is. is shopping and restaurants yep. and things like that. So it's not like you're stuck in a small community airport. Orlando is <laughs> fairly large and there yeah. are things. I wouldn't want to spend my vacation there. But if it's just a sleepover yeah. before you go to the cruise, it's but a when fine I, when hotel. When I come down for the shows and I stay there for a couple of days because I'm really just coming here to the show, mm -hmm. it's so convenient for me. I don't have to rent a car. I don't have to worry about transportation. And I can still, there's like you said, there's places there for me to eat. There's shopping. So I can get everything I need right there. Um, so that's part of the plan I'm talking about. Also, one of the things you might want to consider, too, is adding a Disney stay, an extended right. stay. Yep. One of the things that I've always said to people was, don't do it after your cruise. Come to Walt Disney World before your cruise. Right. Yes. Because your cruise is relaxing. Yes. Your cruise is a little bit of a de-stress. You're so going to be all kinds of mellow. Right. And then you're going to get off the ship and you're going to have to run from rides and stuff like that. So always do, my opinion, yeah. always do if a If at all possible. Now, of course, day. Disney's not very, um, or any of the cruise lines really, because if you're looking at a four-night cruise, they're always like Monday to Thursday or right. something. So it naturally lends itself to doing it after. But if at all possible, doing the resort stay or the, the theme park stay first that's just personal preference, I think. Exactly. And I think for a lot of people, I think they would agree with that. Um, one thing, Disney does talk about land and sea packages. They used to have a really big push on them. Then they stopped offering them. Now they kind of offer them again. We really recommend that you book the two separate. Absolutely. Because what that does is it gives us more control to find you the best deal. First of all, when you're booking the through cruise line, they may not have all resor resort categories available. They may not have all room types available. They may not have all resorts available. Right. So being able to book it separate gives us, again, more control over what your vacation is going to look like. It's very much like booking your own airfare. Mm -hmm. It just separates them as opposed to being bundled. Right. And so when we book your Disney package, um, we can now also offer f watch for any Walt Disney World discounts. Whereas if it's lumped in with your cruise, we have less, you know, mm -hmm. less options in that area. And we've had that happen before when yeah. Disney was bundling the land sea packages. Well, how come I can't take advantage of right. this exactly. thirty percent off? Because people offer. hear Disney and they think it's all it's Disney, exactly. but they're all be, different entities. I don't mean to keep beating the dead horse, but if you've booked your own airfare, you can also watch for a reduction. And a lot of times, while they won't refund you the money, they may give you the credit in the reduction towards another flight. Right. Depending on the airline, they may. Um, that will not happen if you buy bundled air. I promise I will not bring up bundled so another, air again. When you're talking about your, your pre and post stay, another whatever port you're leaving from, a big consideration is how do I get to the ship? Mm -hmm. So that's an um, added factor as well. And so obviously the cruise line will always offer transfers to whatever port, uh, whether or not it's always in your best interest. It's always probably, I would guess, the most convenient. I would think taking the cruise line transfer letting them worry about it. They're picking you up. It's a little bit like a magical express kind of feel where they're worried about it. You're not, you pay your per person price. Is it always the most economical? Not always. You know, I think about in Vancouver, for example, you know, if a family of three or four could take a taxi to port for less than what the transfers are. Um, However, in Seattle, it was a, r a ride. So the taxi was more expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, with, um, here in Orlando, there's uh, FL tours. You just private car transfers. Mm -hmm. We do that a lot. We take we use private car transfer a lot when we're going to port. There's Uber. There's now yep. you know, it's easy to get a cab. I like the control of when I'm arriving. So one thing mm -hmm. to know when you're using Disney Cruise Line transfers, if you're coming into Orlando, uh, into the airport on the day of, you just show up in the area. They load the buses based on your arrival. It's first come, first serve. If you're staying at a resort, the night before you find out your pickup time and people will get confused thinking that the, well, I picked a check-in time of this, mm -hmm. the two are not connected. So when you are at a resort, they tell you when they're coming and it's based on their dispatch and where they have, how many people from where. So you may not get picked up till one o'clock. If you want to be, if you want to have the most control over when you're on the ship, 
you want to look at your own transportation options. Um, here in Orlando, you also have the option of renting a car. I was just going to say, sometimes renting yeah, your own car. We do, we've done that a lot. Um, Hertz, Budget, and Avis all have spots at port. I've only used Hertz and Budget. Out of the two, I would recommend Hertz. Budget was you know, not the great as far as car quality. Um, but you can pick up the car at the airport. Uh, one thing we liked about doing that was we could stop for some supplies on the way to the ship. And go to our welcome center. Yep. Drop in the welcome center. So, you know, you've got the car rental option. You've got, so there's all, and this is true for most cities. You know, there's private car transportation companies everywhere. There's Uber everywhere. There's taxis everywhere. Um, I also want to say something about, I know people are very excited to get to the terminal. While the Disney Cruise Line terminal is lovely. And might be a, one of the nicest cruise terminals I've ever gone in and out of. There's not a lot to do. Right. Exactly. So if you think, well, I'm going to get there at 9 o'clock. And actually, the, the Port Canaveral terminal is, of the places we've been, is kind of the nicest. Well, that's what I said. They bring it's, out characters. And right. yeah. you know, there's a Disney feel to it. And there's Disney cast members. But if you go to Vancouver, you are in a warehouse. A warehouse, basically. And, and I there. want you to know that while they have a snack bar at the Disney Cruise Line Terminal in Port Canaveral, I, please don't show up at Port Canaveral hungry. being hungry. Right. Because this is not, this is chips and an apple. The, the benefit to arriving early for those who do and those of us, I say us because I like to as well, um, is getting, everybody wants early access to the ship. Right. So this is like, people want to be first on. They want to, you know, to be enjoying every extra minute of that they can. So when you hear about people talking to get early to the cruise, don't think it's because there's a lot going on in that terminal. So right. if they're going to start boarding around, usually around noon, most cruise lines will start boarding noon, 1230. You getting there at 10, you're that's, going to have a lot yeah, of that, sit and wait. That's the point I think we were trying to make, too, yes. is that you're getting to the terminal. You're not getting on the ship. Right. Exactly. You're not going to get on that ship until they start right. boarding. And I'm going to give you a Kevin and John tip. If you're not one of those people who needs those extra 120 minutes on the ship, if you arrive at 1.30 or 2 o'clock, you usually breeze through check-in and you walk on the ship and your room is ready. Yeah. That's what we like to do. Yeah. Is we like to get there actually when our room and is again, ready. And again, to... Two different clubs, two rules of thumb. Exactly. And just a so, personal you know, preference. Exactly. But I think our we are all saying the same thing as far as That's right. don't get to the port yeah. at 9 a.m. thinking you're going to get on the ship. Don't think your cruise is going to start in the terminal already because it they, ain't. <laughs> now you're assigned a time. To... You are. So with Disney Cruise Line, I'm going to talk about that when I get to, um, and that's actually a good segue. Let's go to, and let's talk about online check-in. Okay. So now you've booked, you've got your plan, now you've made your final payment, and now it's time to do my online check-in. Whether it's 75 days, 90 days, 120 days before, these are all determined on whether you've sailed before, what class you've booked. So these are all things that you'll know because you've signed into your cruise on the DisneyCruise.com website. So when it's time to do your online check-in, what you're doing is you're completing your online paperwork. So you're doing, you know, completing all your personal information and making sure they have everything they need for customs. You're also, though, you can sign up to Kids for Kids Clubs. You can begin that process. You can book specialty dining. You can book your excursion, spa. This is all, this is when the, the kind of the fun part starts. This is when you start to feel the like planning, this yeah. is happening now. And so this is the planning part. And once that is all complete and you've done all your online check-in documents, then you can choose your port arrival time. And this is, I think they're only still using this in Port Canaveral. Um, and so what this does is you pick your time when time you think you're going to arrive at the port. And then when you get to the terminal, they'll give you a boarding number based on the time that you've requested or submitted for. Now, just to jump in, I can tell you that other cruise lines will most often board the ship according to your loyalty level. Yes. Yeah. And other cruise lines will also board, I've noticed, based on like your location on the ship. It could be that. Um, so it's a little bit different, but in Port Canaveral, you choose this. Now, just because if you, like I have clients say to me, I went on and all that was left was 2.30. I don't want to get on the ship at 2.30. Mm -hmm. I tell them, don't worry about it. Nobody's, right. nobody's keeping track to that level. It's more to give you an order and to give them an idea of when they say, can expect people. It's Disney's Cruise Line way That's of giving right. you a deli number. That's right. So that they don't have a rush or everybody shows exactly. up at the same time. And once they start boarding, they're calling these numbers in order. Like if they started boarding at noon, 
they're through everybody in the terminal by like 12 30 12 45 at the, at the latest that's why i'm telling you if you show yes. up at 1 30 you just breeze right through and that's right there seems to be some stress over that we yes. get the i have a late number i really want to get on yeah. the time i want to get on earlier and then the converse is true oh shoot i just realized that my flight's not going to get in mm-hmm. but my boarding time is nine or my terminal time is 9 a.m what happens if i miss it it's not 9 a.m yeah. Right. They're not letting you on the ship at night. No. Right, exactly. <laughs> that ship came in that morning and everything in the ship is being cleaned. And what we're saying is that that's a little bit has more flexibility. Right. right. So yeah. So don't it. don't let that time stress you out because there's a lot more wiggle room in that than the time would suggest. Right. I think my whole thought process of telling my whole reason for telling people was that is there's not a lot to do in Port Canaveral in the Disney Cruise Line terminal. So getting there at 9 a.m. But, you know, the, the converse is, though, that is true. There are people who love to get in line and they love to meet other cruisers already and the characters come out. So if that's your thing, that's fine. I don't think for, for the most part it's anything that... And don't come hungry. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, you know, we talked about specialty dining on the ships. These these ships aren't designed that specialty dining is the focus. So other cruise lines, that's a really... Mm-hmm big revenue stream for them. That's not the case with Disney Cruise Line. For the most part, all the ships have Apollo. Um, Remy is on the two newer ships. So these are just specialty restaurants that you can book. They do have a cover charge. It's a nominal cover charge. And so these are some things you can do. But with with Disney, your regular rotational dining really is just as much of an experience. So also, I just want to jump back. Palo is adults only. Yes, that's right. Palo is. Remy is adults only. Yes. So those are. Those are mommy and daddy time. Right. And there is an additional charge for each one. Right. But I, I think your point's really good. What you're going to get into is that this, the regular restaurants in the rotation are so special. That's right. That it's not like, oh, I'm eating in this square restaurant every day. I'm looking forward to that right. one great meal. You know, you've got an incredible dining experience and all of the Disney Cruise Line And a lot chips. of people stress about, I didn't get Palo, I didn't get Palo. Mm-hmm. I can tell you, I've eaten in Palo on just about every cruise, mm-hmm. and I've never booked it ahead. Right. <laughs> I have never booked it ahead. Yeah. I rarely am doing my online check-in when I'm supposed to. A little flexibility as to when you eat in Palo, yes. and you'll be able to get That's a reservation. Right. And there's people who are overzealous. So in the planning, they're worried about not having it when they want it. Mm-hmm. So they will book it every night. Mm-hmm. And then you get on board, and then Palo realizes they have a lot of space open. I got, I got, can I tell a quick story? I know we're, we're going long here, but we were on a cruise and a um, bunch of us from Dreams were on this cruise and we thought we were going to eat in Palo every night. <laughs> we had a special in at the restaurant and in with Disney and we thought, well, this is going to be a really great treat. Let's all have Palo every night. It's going to be fantastic. Was it night two or night three? <laughs> Where we thought, I can't have another four hour meal. Palo is a multi course. It's an event. Leisurely yes. paced meal it's where the service is impeccable. Um, it's There's m- far fewer people in the dining room with you. However, I think it was by night three, John and I were looking at each other and was like, let's go get chicken tenders. <laughs> right. Hang out in our stateroom. So it sounds romantic and it sounds great. I'm going to do Palo. I'm going to do Remy. I'm going to do all these specialty restaurants. Don't get caught up in it. Right. Really don't. That's I exactly mean, true. And the same thing, you know, if you don't get it, there's so much else going on it's just not i think there's a there's this fever for it because there's one restaurant well there's also you know disney does things i don't know if you're going to talk about this or not but they have specialty nights where mm-hmm. they have pirate night on some That's sailings right. and uh you know so people want to make sure that they're scheduling palo around those not to miss those yeah. other nights yeah and it's understandable and there's lobster all. night right yeah. on the seven nights there's all and that kind of brings us to the onboard experience so now you know you've done all the hard work you're on board um we talked about rotational dining there's three restaurants on every ship and you will rotate through these restaurants so you will get to experience all of them at least once some twice Even at on least one three, three times yeah So they're all differently themed. There's different things going on. We've got Pirates Night happening. Usually on most sailings, there'll be some fireworks off the side of the ship. These are all kind of these this entertainment thing we talk Mm -hmm. about. Um, The the shows in the main theater. These are Broadway quality Disney shows. I mean, these are these are like cruise line entertainment used to be so cheese like it used to be on other disney, cruise lines yeah. there's still that factor oh, and the disney entertainment comes line, out of the spray can yeah it took it to a whole different level they excel at this like nobody else um 
first run movies on board. They have a theater on board where they're showing first run movies. One of our favorite things about a Disney yes. Cruise Line. It's one of the things that when you've done a Disney Cruise Line and you go to another yes. cruise line, you you start walking around and asking people, well, where's the movie theater? Right. And they look at you. No. There is no movie and theater. And there's always the uh, you know the, the Disney Cruise Line cast member who likes to crack a joke at some point during the week. They, of course, we show for first run movies. We own them, right? Exactly. You know, so they have that. If there's a special, if there's a Disney premiere on land, it also premieres at sea. So you know, there's a lot to be said for that. There's no there extra, people, and there's no extra charge to do that. No, charge, no, there right. are people who book cruises. Yep. Absolutely, we have people book for I the Force Awakens. Yeah. Who booked to coincide with yep. the Star Absolutely. Wars movie? Absolutely. So you know, this is all what's happening. The kids' clubs. You know, we've we've talked about that before. These are these are first class, first run clubs. Um, there's the you know I think one thing that we really should mention is Castaway Key. I think Disney's private oh, island. Don't tell them about it. <laughs> it's a secret. <laughs> Disney's private island really sets them apart. Absolutely, positively. Really, I've been to I think three, maybe four different private islands now of different cruise lines. And they're really, while others are stepping up their game and doing a better job, there's nothing nothing that compares to Castaway Key. Um, And I have to tell you, there's a a family beach, there's a teen beach, and there's an adult beach. And we just did something for the first time. And all of the cruises I've been on, we just did something on the adult beach. And if you can get one. Don't tell them about (laughs) that. (laughs) What did we do on the adult beach? Family show. Family show. (laughs) We rented. Oh, okay. um, Not a condo. Cabana, the <laughs> <a> condo, <laughs> and I have to tell you, it was, in my opinion, it was life changing. Yeah. I usually don't get off at Castaway Key. John burns under fluorescent lights, so it's not like we can spend a lot of time outside. And you get off, you I walk around. I still have sand in my shoes right. from I, three years so, ago. However, we rented a cabana. Actually, one of the people traveling with us rented a cabana, and. I thought I never want to leave, and that is something you will do during your online check-in. Uh huh. And, and that if is you something that's one, very, very hard to get, and it, it, even yeah. harder than a Palo reservation. Yes. Um, grab one. Yeah. Whatever you pay for it, it's worth it. Um. So one thing I did want to make you alluded to the Star Wars cruises. I just wanted to mention that next year in 2017, they have announced that from January, I think the seventh, into somewhere in the middle of April. Every one of those sailings is going to be a Star Wars cruise, mm. Star Wars themed cruise. So while, you know, non Star Wars fans, I don't think it's not like it's going to take over the ship. No, no, no. It's like, but yeah. you don't yeah. have to wear a costume. Right, 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 right. So okay. I don't want you to feel like it's going to be like Comic Con or anything right. where there's people in costume everywhere. But um, for those who are so inclined, I guess it was so successful this year that they well, decided to expand it. There's special merchandise available in the shops, yeah. and there are a couple special of special experiences events. Events. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about life on board the cruise. One of the things about cruising is that it's a really different experience than say going to a theme park or going somewhere else in that, um, first of all, it's very immersive. Um, and you have no cash on board, right? You know, there's no place where you're going to sit down and you're going to pay cash for something. But I also want to point out too, that with Disney cruise line, a lot, a lot of what they offer is included in the price. That's right. So these, we talked about the higher price at the beginning, right? This often comes into play when people are booking. Yes, there's a higher price. However, I'm stepping all over what you were going to talk about. Mm -hmm. Most of the things are included. Right. The dining we talked about, except for the two specialty restaurants, all of that entertainment and dining, that's included in your price. There's no upcharge in the dining room if you decided to have a steak or Mm -hmm. to add a lobster. If it's lobster night, you get a lobster. Um, Soda is included at all of the dining venues as well as there's a... On deck, on the, yeah, there's a drink station. That's what I was looking for, um, where you can self serve soda. Mm-hmm. Um, you talked about the movie is free. The movies are free. The uh, entertainment is right. free. The kids clubs. There's no charge after a certain time. There's no charge if the kids are going to be there for a meal. There's no charge for certain activities. Those are all included. Uh, so when I I find when I do a Disney cruise anyway, my stateroom account at the end is quite a bit lower than when I do other cruise lines, except for shopping. I tend to shop more on a Disney cruise. Well, there's also something else missing from a Disney cruise line. <laughs> we won't talk about that. Chris might be listening. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> well, I'll talk about the beer, uh, awesome. just because yeah. that's something that I do a lot. I actually, uh, between Royal and Disney, I prefer drinking on a Disney ship. Um, I, I really enjoy O'Gill's. 
Uh, that's mm. one of the coolest places to just hang out at. I've only done the classic ship, so I can't remember what it was on the Wonder. But on the Magic, they just converted it. But uh, on like Royal Caribbean, you can obviously pay per drink, or you can do one of their drink packages. Uh, but I find on like Royal Caribbean, the beer selection isn't that great. It's more liquor driven. Mm. So although you can like really make bank on uh, some really top shelf liquors. The beer's not great, whereas Disney, they usually bring in at least one or two specialty beers on board, and then uh, you can get a mug the first day, a big glass mug that's, uh, I think, $13, and then it's only about $8 for a refill, each one of those, and uh, so it, it actually ends up being a really good value for <laughs> beer drinkers over the time, and then... Uh, the, the best part about it, in my opinion, is then you either have the choice of taking your big clunky glass mug at the end of the trip or even back to the stateroom at the end of the night. You can carry it with you or you can trade it in for a beer token coupon, which is essentially just a piece of paper that if you don't want to carry that around after you're finished or after you're finished with your cruise, you know, you just get that. Hold on to it when you're ready to go back. No, no worries about bringing in an old dirty mug or anything. They have a fresh one waiting for you. Uh, and I just, I enjoy that experience a lot more. They also have wine packages mm -hmm. for the restaurants as well. And um, one thing about the rotational dining is that your wait staff also goes with you mm -hmm. from restaurant to restaurant. And so by the end of it, these are people who've gotten to know, usually after the first night, these are people who've gotten to know you, they know your likes, your dislikes, and it becomes a rapport. Um, and so if you have a wine package, that will also follow you from restaurant to restaurant each night. What I think is incredible about Disney Cruise Line cast members is the ones who remember you from six years ago. Oh, yeah. You were on a cruise out of, you know... Vancouver, and you did an Alaska cruise, mm -hmm. and you think, how do you remember that? Right. And they're just absolutely amazing when it comes to that. I want to jump back just a little bit. We talked about life on board. That is not the same for everyone. I don't want you to think that Craig's talking about a beer package and we're talking about rotational dining and things like that. Everybody chooses the way their life on board runs. Right, right. It's your cruise. It's your vacation. There are people who are joiners. They will do the tours. They will do the seminars. They will do the exhibitions. They will go to all of the pool parties. There are You get to choose. And then there are people like John who pull the drapes in the stateroom and <laughs> order room service. Um, there are other people on a cruise with us? Exactly. I don't See, if you went out of the outside the room, you would know. Um, you get to make the cruise what you want. I like finding a place where it's not crowded and sitting down and reading. I think that's great. Yeah. That's my favorite. Um, cruising is really, I think, my favorite vacation. And I think it's because I'm not one who can just, I, I, I can't do, I've done the all-inclusive thing. That's not for me because I don't like to be in one spot with my option to be on the beach all day. And I think that's why I like Alani. I can be on the beach when I want to be, but I can go do other stuff. And I find cruises the same way. I still get my all-day beach day at Castaway. I get to be in a different port where I can get off and walk around or if not. I want to. Mm -hmm. um, or Absolutely. I can stay on the ship. I can make this within the confines of the cruise be what I want. That's exactly what you're saying. And I just want to quickly say about excursions. That's a big question we get. A lot of people who are first booking a cruise think they need an excursion for every port. I don't know that I'm the best one to talk about this because I am anti-excursion. I just, that's not my thing. Certain, if I'm in Alaska, I think excursions are important. You know, there's unique and different things to see. If I'm in the Caribbean, uh, there's not a lot, you know, to, to pay for an excursion for somebody to take me to a beach. Mm -hmm. I'll just get off the ship, get a taxi and go to a beach if I wanted to do that. And or there's I'll just snorkeling get a, and there's parasailing yeah. and there's scuba diving. And if mm -hmm. you're not, somebody who does those things, yeah. I find one of the things that John and I like to do is anytime we visit a different port, they usually offer an excursion that is a tour of the port, a tour of the island. It's usually a couple of hours. It usually involves a bus. I like to get off and see someplace that I haven't seen before. And I like to sort have get them, an overview right, of it. Show yeah. me everything that you're proud of. Yeah. And then, you know, I can make a decision whether I want to go back to something. Those are really the only shore excursions yeah. other what, than Alaska that we join. And when I do excursions, I say I'm anti-excursion, but when I do excursions, I often will look for private excursions. So I might do, I might have done some research and have a driver waiting for me in a port I've never been. 
who's going to take me for three or four hours and do. So there's different ways to do excursions. Absolutely. I do want to say this. Um, we talk about, you know, you book a, sh- a ship excursion. If that excursion gets delayed, you've got the save, you've booked this through the ship. I think there's a safety that goes with that. And there's I a, don't, There's also a comfort level with yeah. people who are nervous. And I don't want to underestimate how important that is. Uh, for me, I've been traveling. I took my first cruise on my own with a friend when I was 16 years old. So... I've traveled. I don't think you can do that anymore. You cannot do that anymore. I'll have you know. But at the time, there was back one cruise line who would back let in us. The do 1880s, it. you could there do that. There was one cruise line who let us do it. She was on the Nina. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, some days I'll someday I'll tell you stories about that cruise. But oh, I think we read about the police blotter. <laughs> so I'm comfortable. I'm fine with getting off and finding a taxi driver who's going to. I'm going to explore the island with or going out on my own. So I understand that everybody has that right. comfort level, but there are organized companies as well. And don't underestimate the value of nothing. Mm. Get off, walk around, enjoy the port, meet the locals, go into the shops. Don't underestimate that either. Try and find something unique to that island also. Right. I also want you to know that if you are one of those people who understands that this ship will leave you, that you can make your plans for a private excursion to be back in time. Right. right. You, if you're smart, you know, if smart enough to book your own private excursion, you have to be smart enough to tell them, listen, the ship's leaving yeah. at six. I need to be back by four. You also have to understand too that these ports of call, this is what these people do for a living. Right. That's this right. is how they make exactly. their money. They know. I can't tell you how many times you've been in a port of call and they said. You know, what ship are you on? I'm on the Magic. Well, I know where the Magic is, is right. parked. I know how to get you to the yes. Magic. I know when it's going to leave. And I board. just have to tell you that when you get off the ship, I keep saying it, the ship will leave you. It seems to be that Cozumel is the port where this, you, I see this the most frequently. The videos of people running down. Or just get it. If your stateroom is facing the dock, around the time it's time to pull away, it's fun to sit outside on your balcony. But you know why that is, right? Because the senior frogs, frogs is yeah. right at and the end. That's exactly what it is. Watch people who have had too much to drink come careening down that <laughs> front walkway, <laughs> screaming and flailing at the top of their lungs. Don't leave. So don't it's leave. not necessarily you've done an excursion. Right. They're parked at right. senior frogs. And so, drinking. I mean, I get asked all the time, "What should I, you know? Should I do this or should I do that?" And it may not be something I've experienced. I can do a little bit of research for you. You know, like often if I have somebody asking me, "What should I do in St. Thomas?" If I haven't done an excursion myself. Uh, that's a sign of a good travel. A travel agent doesn't have all the answers, but they usually know how to find them. And so I'll do some homework. I'll do some research. I may recommend to you, you know, I'll look, because f- I'll look myself. Who has good reviews if you're looking for a private excursion? We also have Where a really good resource. Our, we have so many agents, and we have so many right. agents who travel and do their own thing that I can't tell you the emails that come out that says, I have an agent who's asked me about something. Has anyone ever done it? Right. Three or four agents say, yeah, I've done that. That's great. I want to ride a dolphin. Which one's the best one? Yeah. <laughs> flipper. Always pick Flipper. <laughs> Always pick Not which flipper. is the best dolphin. Oh, I thought it was which dolphin. Anything else you want to add to the... I meant pet a dolphin. Um, I didn't mean I to ride a dolphin. the onboard experience, that's about it. The one thing I want to talk about, you're on board, you're having a great time. Now you're thinking of the next one. So onboard bookings, um, usually, usually that's your best savings and usually the only way to get a discount on a Disney Cruise Line is so you're on board and you decide I'm going to do another one. There's two ways to do an onboard booking. One is to do a placeholder. Placeholder means I don't know when I want to do this again, but I know I want to do it, and it's going to be in the next two years. So you book a placeholder. You pay $250 to hold your place. Basically, it gives you a reservation number, and that reservation number is not tied to any specific date. And then once you decide on a date, we transfer that reservation number to an actual booking. Um, And then as long as it's not a blackout date, because, again, it's, it can be complicated, but as long as there's not a blackout date, you will get 10% discount on the cruise that you're booking, as well as an onboard credit. So whatever onboard discounts they've offered or onboard promotions That's right. will go with you with that reservation exactly. as long as it's not Now, if you know date. what cruise you want next, then you would just book that cruise on board and you would book the next sailing. You get your 10% discount. You'd know what your onboard credit is. The onboard credit is based on the length of your cruise, so that can vary. You'd also be able to pick your stateroom. That's right. Yeah, so that if you know your date, there's no benefit to you to booking a placeholder and coming home and having us change exactly. it. You always want to book as soon as possible. Right. might be a day, might be three days, it might be two weeks. Always book when you know because you never know what's going to happen down the road. So the onboard booking offers, they're good for 
two years from the way you book it. If you book an actual cruise date, but then get home and change your mind, we can still change that date. Again, we're bound by blackout dates, and you have up until two years from the time it was booked to use it and keep the onboard offers. So probably the only way to get a discount. I think, unless you have other questions for me, the last thing I want to say is when you book your cruise with Dreams Unlimited Travel, we do give you an onboard credit. And John alluded to this, there's no cash on board. Basically, when you get on board, you're setting up a stateroom account. So everything on board is charged through your room key to your onboard account. The onboard credit, whether it's through an onboard booking, whether it's through Dreams, that's used for anything charged to that account. So whether it's excursions, spa, shopping, alcohol, whatever it is. So if you've booked a cruise with Dreams, say you've booked a $5,000 cruise, we give you an onboard credit of $250. That, that just means you get on the ship with a negative balance. Yeah, so you're starting 250 bucks ahead of the game. Right. And, and that so, can be applied to things like your gratuities. That's right. So you if know, you that's haven't already them, paid for. Your yep. barbell, your, your, your spot Your big mug of yeah. beer, as Craig would yeah. probably apply it. Basically, anything <laughs> you're doing on the board, because it's all getting charged to your stateroom account. Right. It is a non-refundable credit, so make sure you use it. Exactly. Um, and then we also offer gift baskets. It's true. For clients that book with us, and I believe we're on all. That is correct. Uh, a few months ago, we went to going to all sailings, no matter what port you're sailing out of. Uh, as long as you're in the U.S. or uh, Canada, you receive a gift bag from Dreams Unlimited Travel with what we consider are very useful items mm-hmm. for your cruise um, and things that you could take with you and use on your cruise and and uh, enjoy that. Um, unfortunately, we cannot send those to folks who are outside of the U.S. or Canada, but we also have a welcome center in Port Canaveral, Florida. If you are driving, you can come down and you can stop in our welcome center, see our folks who work there, and you can even pick up your basket there if you decide you don't want to have it shipped to you or you can't because of your address. Also, you have to prepare yourself at the end of cruise to get off the ship. Getting off is far less exciting. And glamorous. No one asks your name when you get back on land and announces that the Heinrichs party has returned to Port Canaveral. (laughs) Or worse yet, you go to someplace to eat, and it's not like, this isn't included. Yeah. It's like, what, I have to choose? You're not going to bring me three? No one's going to come in and fix up your room before you go to sleep, close your curtains. Yeah, there's no chocolate... Little chocolates on your bed when it's when you come back at the end of the night. Except for certain very, very rare instances, people are hooked on cruising. Once you cruise once, it's it's addictive and you wanna yeah. keep going over and over and over again. And I think it's, it's because of the of what we talked about earlier, that everybody can make it the vacation they need it to mm-hmm. be. One thing I like about Disney Cruise Line as well is they've really relaxed on their dress code policies. That was one thing we never liked about cruise. I don't like the formality of cruising. I don't want to have to have formal wear, and I don't. I it's just not my thing. I want to be comfortable. That's part of my vacation. I am. And we so. we are not dress up folks, and I am not belittling folks who enjoy yeah, dressing you, their families and that's, up. But again, that's the great part about it. Right. You are welcome to it. The great thing is now, all of us don't have to do what we're formal not comfortable with. Formal night for John and I was chicken tenders night. Yep. And sometimes we'll be, you know, I mean, I'll be respectful. I'm not going to wear my. I don't wear my bathing suit anywhere, but I wouldn't wear my bathing suit to the dining You're room. Daisy Dukes. Yeah. yeah. There are there are still rules. I mean, right. There are still boundaries. They ask you not to wear shorts to dinner. And maybe on formal night, I, w- I will be sitting beside somebody who is in full dress up gear. And I love looking at them. I think they look beautiful. And I think it's fantastic that they get to do what they're comfortable with as I get to do what I'm comfortable with. I just hope... You will see a lot of times that when this discussion comes up, it becomes very heated and one side will start judging the other. All you can say is it's everybody's cruise. Enjoy what you're doing. Enjoy what your family is doing and stop worrying about what other people are doing. Agreed. All right. Thank you, Tracy, for encapsulating a very complicated topic. I appreciate that very much. Uh, We're going to move on to our agent spotlight. We like to end each show each week highlighting one of our Dreams Unlimited Travel agents and uh, getting them a chance to uh, be highlighted and shown for you if they can't come here to the studio personally. And this week we're talking about Kelsey Johnson. Uh, Kelsey was born and raised in Denver, Colorado. Can I say that's a great picture of Kelsey? She does. You want to know something that's funny about this? I had a battle royale with Kelsey to get a picture, and she sent this one to me, and she's like, 
Please don't make it big. And she it looks, looks like beautiful. She's at the Sundance Film God, Festival. It's gorgeous. It looks, I know. I love that picture. All she looks agent, like a real Colorado girl, doesn't she? Except for a handful. Our agents are absolutely nuts about their pictures. <laughs> are they are. Please don't show my picture. Please. I thought you were going to say except for a handful. Our agents are fairly attractive. <laughs> fairly attractive. Except for a handful. No, they all are very attractive. And, and they're all, going to want to know which one's not. And they're so worried about how they look in these pictures and she looks fantastic. So That's a great picture. I Kelsey. agree. I agree. Kelsey was born and raised in Denver, Colorado. She's been with Dreams Unlimited Travel since 1999 and she actually came on as one of our original agents. Unbelievable. She came she's, the building. she's still around. Can you believe it? She has a 21-year-old daughter, Sarah, who shares her love of Disney and has been her travel buddy on many amazing Disney adventures. Sarah's uh, 21. I know. Can you believe it? It's crazy, isn't it? Disneyland is her happy place. She's been there many, too many times to count. She's experienced five Adventures by Disney vacations and sailed on all four Disney Cruise Line ships. Again, we are not keeping Kelsey busy enough. <laughs> Kelsey's hobbies include camping, crafting, collecting Walt Disney and Mary Poppins memorabilia, and of course, traveling to Disney whenever possible. Her advice is that if you haven't experienced it yet, there's nothing like walking down Disneyland's Main Street, USA, in the footsteps of Walt Disney. Kelsey specializes in Disney Cruise Line, Alani, Adventures by Disney, and Disneyland Vacations. And you can, she, she can be reached at Kelsey at DreamsUnlimitedTravel.com. And Thank, Kelsey is K-E-L-S-I-E I'm not for even those that try, are listening. Because every time I try to spell my agent's names, I get I know, them wrong. But the agents always say, thank you for getting my name right. So I always want to make sure. Because <laughs> I know some people are listening and not looking. That is true. Uh, if you are listening, you can also check out our show notes page and we'll have this information in there as well. Um, thank you guys for a lively conversation. Uh, I appreciate all the work you did on this, Tracy. This is not an easy topic to cover in a 45 minute to yeah. hour show <laughs> yeah, for sure. Exactly. It's a lot of work to be done. Uh, thank you everybody for listening and watching at home. We hope you have a great week and we hope you have a great vacation.